Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Productions! Hello class, Professor Sunrise here. In today's class, we are going to talk about the bandless which dropped. I hope all of you guys did your homework and noticed that the bandless was out. If not, it's okay, I'm there for you guys. So, in this video, we are going to take about, talk about the hits of the bandless, what my thoughts about the current meta and the future of the meta will be, and most importantly, how I'm building my virtual list um, in the future, or actually I'm currently using right now. I'm having huge success with it, so you can definitely uh, just copy me and play that list. Spoiler alert, it's still so so. Um, so, without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave some feedback down in the comment section below. And like I said, on 100 subscribers, I'm gonna do a giveaway. I actually decided on the products right now, I'm probably gonna go for one display of Dama, the well, the newest set with Ethereans, and I'm probably gonna do one ultimate uh, rare card of a copy of the current OTS. <clears throat> probably the next one I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pull, or maybe I'm just gonna buy one off market. I'm probably not gonna do Fusion Destiny as an account like I hit, and you probably don't want that. So let's get right into the video. So here we are in the ban list section. Uh, as you guys probably already know, as it's been out for one or two days. Um, I just wanted to get over this real quick to give my thoughts on every single hit and how I think the meta will shape up, but we'll get to that later on. So, for the banned forbidden cards, we have Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon that makes the Hulk engine or Hulk package and lots of decks completely unnecessary. Hulk Fabrics will definitely still see some play in a few decks just as a generic tool to link climb with. You can still go into Selene Access Code Talker in a lot of decks with it. Um, you can still get important tuners out of the deck, like Red Rose Dragon. Um, you could theoretically still get cards like uh, Virtual World Lulu out of the deck, but overall, Hulk Fibrex will be in a very balanced state, in my opinion. Um, prank Kids Meow Meow Mew getting banned basically kills the Prankist list as we know it. Um, together with Anaconda, I think we are out of the one card engine dot decks. There still definitely will be decks with which will play like an engine plus Brave, for example, you can do it in Virtual World. Uh, but overall, these two cards limited will make it so that one to three card engine decks, mostly with Brave, one engine, and then DPE, um, will not be playable anymore. Prank Kids will most likely be dead. There's no reason to play it. If you want to play like a two to three card combo deck, you can play better stuff, like Virtual World. And then Akana being hit, mostly against, uh, against DPE, the few decks which played it to go for Branded Fusion, for example, Tribigate, um, Branded will lose to that, but overall I really like these forbidden hits. I mean, a Rodan is not really that important, <clears throat> but overall these hits are quite okay. Now for the limited section, we have Jet Synchron. So now with less follow-up or less power, less ceiling for virtual, uh, for virtual, I'm sorry, for uh, <laughs> a Needle Fiber or Hulk Fibrex, Jet Synchron to one doesn't really do a lot. It's still a good starter. Um, if your deck somehow goes into Hulky Fibrex, for example, you're playing Red Rose, um, like Rose Dragon, Tangy, whatever, uh, sad deck, base deck, whatever you want to call it, um, this could be a decent starter for that, um, but overall I don't think this will have a huge impact, maybe for the Synchron decks itself, the, the uh, Tuner slash Synchro Spam decks with uh, Junk Speeder, I think it's called, now that we're in a format which is quite low on hand trips, this, this could do something, maybe you can even play Brave with it, uh, I don't know if the deck really needs its um, normal summon, as probably any normal summon plus a free special summon, which is a tuner, will get you to uh, the play. Anyways, uh, limited to one retro strength. I don't get this. Of course, this card is insane. But in my opinion, like either based, sad, or brave tenny weren't really that popular anymore. And while it's a very good pre uh, preemptive fit, because I could see based coming back as people are not on hand traps at all and Scythe is still not banned. And you can just Scythe lock people for free as they are like on so little hand traps. Um, so I guess this is a good hit, but this deck is still definitely playable, especially in a 60 card variant. It didn't really come up that much that you would go for um, the Red Rose Dragon as a normal summon and most of the times you went uh, through it with a uh, Hulky Fibrex. Um, so that deck is still, or that engine is still definitely playable. It just feels weird to play that one off um, card in your deck to get two with two bricks or two or more or less bricky cards in your deck. So it, it feels a little iffy, but if you're playing like a 60 card pile dot deck, this is still very playable. Um, Yadakarazu, this literally does nothing. If you can normal summon um, and have the opponents 
hold follow up from hand and grave have removed and then you can attack with it directly as the opponent won't have any cards in the hand uh, field you deserve to win therefore this card will probably don't do anything hockey fabrics limited i don't know if they were like some weird crystals um place probably not maybe some weird uh, quick synchro place you, you could do but probably also not it's mostly maybe for the list which play two hockey fibrex of base maybe there were some i know that people play two verta i don't know if there were on two hockey fibrex as well i guess it's like a cute future proofing um if there's ever gonna be um engine uh, or an, another link three payoff for hockey fibrex which can be played in decks which play like extra extravagance and stuff like that you cannot do that anymore as you can only play one hog and if you only have one hog it's gonna be very risky to resolve that extra against so i guess that's okay monkey board can be very interesting uh, very excited to what what is Triff gonna do with monkey board and um especially the beyond pendulum i don't know the new pendulum link to the new um, electromite basically i'm very excited what will happen with that i'm a decent fan of a uh, little pendulum i would say so this could definitely be something shooting rise of dragon i don't even know why this is at one no one played this at more than one maybe this is some quick synchron shit as well now thinking about this i was thinking about maybe playing a quick synchron virtual world list maybe i'll have to tinker with that um but we'll have to see the, the, my current run is looking very good and i'm gonna show you that later on of course change of four to one doesn't really do a lot um it's basically mind controller 2 now uh so that's cool i guess but it's not really that insane it's a decent going second card of course but it's probably not gonna do anything too nerd worldly time seal i honestly don't know what time seal exactly does i haven't really looked at it i think it's like uh you stop your opponent from drawing right but then you can all you can't activate it in the draw phase yeah so it's really bad it doesn't do anything uh won't be played uh semi-limited Dynamite Knight, the true deck of fighter, to two probably doesn't matter. Benton to two is really interesting for uh, Drydon, like a nice consistency boost. Tanky to two, Tribrigate is gonna love this. Maybe even a Lunar Light Tribrigate or like any sort of Lunar Light variant might be good now. They do, they did lose the Anaconda, which was probably a big payoff of the deck, uh, which it wanted to end on, but there's still enough payoff out there, and then one extra um, Tiger can be cu crucial. Uh, two Pot of Desires, this is by far the most important hit for all of us virtual world players out there. Finally, it is worth it to play a scuffed ratio list again. Um, with two desires, you can definitely still uh, three, uh, play three Queen Long. And my virtual world soul list really benefited from this. And I played this deck a shit ton today. I got to, I think, uh, roughly 400 rating on uh, Dueling Book in like one sitting. And I'm gonna keep playing that more. I'm gonna give you all the insight I had with this deck um, later on in this video. So stay tuned for that. This is a very interesting hit for us. A light section 2 doesn't matter because there's no anaconda anymore i guess you can play pure trickster again uh wall of revealing light doesn't do anything uh forbidden unlimited night assailant does basically dog shit trishula i guess you could maybe loop this so this like some weird ftk decks which will pop up mirage stelio at unlimited doesn't matter you only play the one a hero lives is another starter for heroes circle another starter of salaman great and scapegoat doesn't matter um so that's it for the uh, forbidden, forbidden list and let's get right into how what i think will be the uh, upcoming meta for now so probably to no surprise as you can see there were no despier hits no sword soul hits and no hits really apart from the anaconda to the outlitch branded pile we currently have and those three being probably the best three decks maybe prank it could have been put in there or maybe even based who the fuck knows but based and prank it's got obliterated or more or less um, hit pretty hard so the meta is actually pretty simple right now. We will be in a Despia, Sword Soul, um, Eldritch branded slash maybe even Eldritch Sun um, sort of format. I'm really not that excited about it because it's basically the same format we had for now. What is cool about it is that we don't have to um, test super hard and s get like a complete new scrap to the new meta whatever um, for the German nationals or the nationals in general. So it won't be as bad. I'm having a very close to the Nationals um, ban list as the meta is actually not going to change a lot. So if you think about playing a rogue deck, if you think about, okay, what deck we want to do, what's the meta call going to be, it's definitely going to be Despia, Sword Soul, Branded Eldritch in that order, I would assume. Um, other than that, the rogue slash tier 1.5 slash tier 2 um, world is wild. Um, like I said, I'm having great success with Sword Soul Virtual World and I'm going to show you the list right now and why I think it's good very good contender for the meta right now and especially why it's the best virtual so welcome list. to the lab this is the sort virtual list i've been using on ladder right now 
Um, as you can see, this is probably not gonna say a lot because the meta is like quite early, but I've been using this deck quite effectively in what is high rated meta right now. I did play against a lot of Despi, I did play against a lot of Sword Soul, I haven't faced a single Eldritch uh, deck, uh, but I did play against a few stun decks. So let's get over the theory of why I think Sword Soul Virtual is the best list right now. So before the ban list, the meta is basically the same thing, so we don't have to take into consideration a meta shift. Before the ban list, in my opinion, it was very I was very torn between them, but I think I graduated more to Brave because as the more as I tested, the more uh, the problems of Sword Soul became uh, prevalent, and the more I disliked it. But now with Desires at two, it is actually, in my opinion at least, better to play Sword Soul as Desires is an insane consistency tool for a deck which needs as many cards as possible, and Sword Soul engine is a way stronger engine which doesn't rely on its one-offs to be useful. If you are forced to use your desires and you didn't see an Enchantress yet, or an Enride, um, and you banish a Griffin Rider and or a Fateful, the Brave Engine just loses way too much um, of its value and its resource generation and its ceiling, and you basically don't get any of it. And if you have the Sword Soul package, you only, all you ever need is one Mohi or one Ta'ai to get like insane value of it to get the double Synchro 10 package. So, in my opinion, Desires to 2 makes it so that the virtual list is just by far the best. Add to that, that um, the Despair matchup is quite bad for us, um, and the Sword Soul package gives you a lot of tempo and a lot of um, just push power and OTK potential into that matchup so that you maybe don't even have to go into a grand, grand game with that. Um, and it just overall feels like the strongest right now. As our Sword Soul matchup is pretty good, we don't need the Beatrice into Token Collector to beat that matchup. The, our disruption is insane enough against that. We have Shen Shen against the Tenyis, we have a Crystal Wing and a Chucha against the normal summons. Um, what more is there to ask for? And then if you draw the Sword Soul package with it, we have an Omni Negate and a um, Seed Signal Long Drawn with it. So that's all you really need. Um, and secondly, Desires is actually also really good for the Sword Soul package, as the Sword Soul package of course works better if you have more cards. Um, it doesn't really matter that you banish the Long One, as long as you get the Mogi alive, it's all you really ask for. And lastly, um, because we're playing the Desires, we kind of have to scuff our ratios, like I said earlier on in the video, and I'm actually playing three Kringlong, something which you don't really want, but you gotta do it. Uh, because you really need one Kringlong, you can get away with banishing the knee, and you can get away with banishing the Chuchu and not getting to them. As long as you build enough disruption and have enough tools to OTK your opponent next turn, you are usually fine and you don't really need that infinite grind game with Virtual can offer. Sword Soul, of course, helps you really in that as it just pushes so much damage, so much disruption on the board that you can get away with not having that infinite grind. And secondly, 3 Kringlong hel helps this deck out the most because you really need one, uh, three cards. You need a Sword Soul card, you need a Virtual card, and you need a way to get the uh, Virtual on the field. And having that one extra Kringlong actually makes it so that we can somewhat play. Of course, this is like a bad play, you need actually two names with it, but in my opinion, this is just the best... Uh, list to play three Kringlong at and you kind of have to play three Kringlong if you want to play Desires and with Desires at two in my opinion you just kind of I'm saying my opinion quite a lot but in my opinion um, it's just way too strong for Virtual not to play pure Virtual probably doesn't have enough ceiling uh, and could definitely use the Desires um, and also you don't lose too much with the Sword Soul package by playing that so guys don't be on that Copium don't think, oh, it's so bad because it's like, oh, this it can be a little bricky. Virtual World is bricky as hell anyways. Um, so either you have everything or you don't play at all. And that one Mohi or that one Enchantress you had in your hand is not going to matter. So embrace it and go for the high roll. You will love it as the deck is actually quite consistent. Uh, if you know how to play it, if you know how to build the deck, and if you know how to side properly. Speaking of siding, what am I siding? What am I maining? What are my defensive cards even? So... Um, let's just get right over the list. Um, as you can see, I'm still maxing out the virtual rolls. Uh, still only one Neon. Um, I haven't missed the uh, second Neon with the uh, Desires, as you never really want to see that card in your opening hand, as you really want to normal summon the virtual rolls. Uh, three Kaloon, three Kring Long, because of Desires, of course. Two Chucha. Um, still no Jan Wu. Um, having two, only two traps can hurt with Desires, but like I said, you really need the consistency, and adding that one Jan Wu really just doesn't do anything. Three Etela. Uh, three Emergence, two Mogi, one Tai, one Long John for the Sword Soul package. I cut the Blackout as it just doesn't do enough into the meta right now. It could be something to side in. Uh, it's really good against Sword Soul, for example, and against a lot of decks. But so far, I haven't really missed it. I didn't really go for the Grandmaster route a lot. Uh, like 9 out of 10 times, if I have um, Virtual World, uh, Sword Soul package, it's only really good if I have the Virtual World package. 
uh, with it. And then I can definitely just go for double synchro 10 route and draw two with a Coral Dragon Mohi into um, uh, here Long Juan or the Baroness. And that's all you really need. And that's like insane, especially because the draw two is really good into the um, Despair matchup to see your side deck cards as we struggle to get like a lot of meaningful disruption against them. It's been like that before. And just playing that anti-spell fragrance turbo in turn uh, in game two and game three can be really good. It's way more draw than you have with the uh, Brave Engine, for example, because we can use Coral Dragon quite effectively. In the Brave variant, it's quite hard to get Coral Dragon value, at least in my opinion. I had really uh, I had really struggled with that. Um, so we have the two desires. Gotta love this card. It feels so strong to resolve. It's not even bad to activate just as the first card to bait an ash and then just uh, continue with the virtual place, especially if you have three Qinglong in the main deck, um, which I do side out, but I'm gonna get to that when I'm talking about the side deck. So for defensive cards, as you can see, they are quite low. Um, as I just noticed, the deck, first of all, plays kind of bad with a lot of defensive cards, and they are also quite bad in general. So I just decided for six cards, which are like really good one-for-one -one trades, Ash being probably the best hand trip right now, and it's basically almost always the best hand trip, and it's like a really good one for one trade with branded fusion and all sorts of things. And then three imperm, as it's also a really good one for one trade against a lot of things. And most importantly, it's a life going second. So in my opinion, these are the best hand traps right now. And hand traps overall are just really bad because you have to remember, Brave is still in the format. Uh, so a lot of times when you only have one hand trip, you really want to make it count uh, with imperm just hitting the griffin and Ash just hitting the most important play, which forces them to griffin. Um, just feels the best and that one caught by the grave as a sack card is completely busted uh, i don't know why this card is still legal um <clears throat> extra deck didn't really change anything about that i'm still missing a break so about uh, what else am i supposed to say um what is noteworthy in my opinion is i really um started to use the yazi line way more often um to get a tai, tai out of the deck and then actually resolving both moi and tai uh, can be really good, especially for example, if you know you get disrupted by an Imperm and then you synchro them off into a Yazi. Yazi pop something and then um, Yazi effect, summon Tai, Tai, banish Yazi or Mohi, um, go into Grandmaster or Baxia and then maybe get the long drawn. And if you have another worm, you can go for more plays or for example, you will mostly do this play going second. You can go for um, a Baxia and break apart the board even more. Maybe after that, you start to play Virtual World or even going first, I made this to um, because I was heavily hand trapped, I summoned the GG out of it, uh, getting um, into a Nian in my grave, and that way I could, with the Chucha, still get into a Shen Shen, Chucha, um, Crystal Wing Pass, or something like that. So there's definitely a lot of stuff you can do with this card, and I didn't use it in the early days of, or it was the one or two days ago when I started playing this deck, but Yazi is definitely a very crucial card, so always remember that you can make similar plays to Tenhi Sword Soul, and uh, not Tenhi Sword Soul, Tenhi, a Brave Tenhi where you pop the Yazi with the uh, Baron and then go into uh, Source of Play. You can always do this in this deck as well. Um, the extra deck, like I said, nothing really changed there. For the side deck, I am on three anti-spells. Blue is the best card going first right now. It's the most versatile. It hits basically everything. Um, still on three nip, really good card. I always set this in against Sword Soul um, because people are not playing around it and at worst, it's a one for one trade. Uh, three DD Crow, I always set these in going second against uh, Despia. Three evenly. I try to side this in every time going second against most of the decks, um, especially against Sword Soul and Despia. Um, then again, I would also side this in against Eldritch Branded. Reason for that is a lot of people are on the anti spell in the side deck, and we have a really hard time to play with that. As we see, we have 15 spells, like most of them are consistency cards, and like all of them give us um, a value for our virtual engine basically. Um, so I really want to resolve our spells and even it's just overall really good right now It really hits the outlet uh, the um, branded engine making the grind way easier because it takes away so many of their resources It's really good against floodgates. It's really good against um, Sword Soul if they don't make a Baron And if they do make the Baron, it's not that bad that we missed the battle phase just for one for one trade as a lot of people are not on the Baron um, and we also have still have other hand traps to hit the Baron earlier on, so that even he can be really crucial against that deck. And lastly, I have two Cosmic and Run Reboot to hit the Eldritch uh, deck, which I'm consider cutting because I'm not playing against them at all. So what is my side deck theory? Um, most of the time I will side out three of those, and I really want to have um, nine defensive cards or 10 defensive cards with the Cold by uh, post side. So what I decided to do is cut out one Mohi, cut out one Quinglong, 
and cut out one uh, one lao lao, making so that we took out one of each parts of our engine. We have one virtual world starter name, we have one way to get a virtual world on the field, and we have one sort through card, making it so that we take out um, one piece out of every engine makes it so that it f still feels kind of smooth. Queen Long is also like a really bad card going second. Lao Lao we don't really want to see as a starter for the engine. Of course it's fine, but we'd much rather have that later on. So this is fine. Also it's not a worm, so we keep the worm uh, count maxed out. And going second it's super fine to just have five ways into sort for package. Just going second it is quite fragile and it's much better to resolve later on in the combo and to start with the virtual so you pick up out the ball and then finish them off with the Mogi normal summon. Um, so that's my side deck theory. Overall, this deck has been going great. Definitely check this out. It is a little weird to play in the uh, in the beginning, but it's overall really strong, and I highly can encourage you guys to play that. So that's been it for today's class. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as a quick conclusion for what we were talking about in this video, the ban list basically didn't really do a lot. It did hit a few of the um, pile dot decks the most, um, especially uh, decks which relied on Anaconda, Prank Hit, and decks which relied on a Rotodon combos to be their main game plan. Um, decks like Sword Soul, Despia, and Branded Eldritch didn't get hit at all and were actually buffed in the uh, sense of Sword Soul, though you could argue that the Rotodon hit is it's like basically at the same sp uh, spot right now. We can argue with that. Um, so the meta is actually pretty much the same as it's been before. We did get Dharma, so maybe um, Therians can switch up something. Brave didn't get hit at all, so those could be some things to take in consideration, but we don't care about that. We are Virtual World Pilots, and Sword for Virtual World is, in my opinion, the best variant, as it doesn't really uh, conflict with Desires, and Desires is an insane tool, which you definitely want to play in Virtual, and it's just slightly stronger, or way stronger, actually, than pure um, Virtuals. Um, and Desires is just way too strong not to play and therefore Brave kind of falls off in my opinion, at least for now in the low hand trap format which we are in right now. If the hand trap uh, gets pumped up again, maybe we can decide for a different list. But until then, if the meta stays like this, definitely play Swords or Virtual as it plays Desires the best. The Swords or package gives you insane ceiling and tempo and power to push through Despair bots and actually OTK them and don't even have to grind against them. And overall, those are my thoughts on current Banless slash virtual theory. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. You guys are dismissed. Class is out, but before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because, I'm, like I said, on 100 subscribers, we are going to do a giveaway here. So, peace.